Well, 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 here we are doing the November Druthers. What's in the news? Truth, love, and freedom. That's what's in the news. So, as always, if you're not familiar with this series, it's basically me reading the newspaper. <laughs> the Absurdity Observer, which is a, a column on the back of the Druthers publication. For anybody that's not familiar with Druthers, Again, I say this every time. I'm not affiliated with them. I'm just a huge fan. Um, I will vouch for and defend anyone who believes in truth, love, and freedom. And I forget who said it, but I may not agree with what you have to say, but I'll defend to the death your right to say it. That's kind of the idea here. I may not agree with everything that's in here, but hell, this is a way better source of factual information than anything you'll find on a uh, state-funded or, or state-sponsored uh, media company. Uh, the news is, is not truthful, right? Stating the obvious. But there are still some little, you know, glimmers of hope in the news world, Druthers being one of them. There's, there's plenty of them out there, actually. Rebel News, some, you know, Leaning right, some leaning left, some leaning forward, some leaning back, some not leaning at all. I don't know. I don't like labels. I don't like labeling, labeling myself or anyone else as anything, any any sort of ist or ism. I don't think that's right. It doesn't do, do us justice. It doesn't speak to the spirit of the human race, certainly. So let's just stick to what we do here which is the absurdity observer and I'll save the philosophical conversations for another day in another time and another place but yeah I also do lately it's been freedom wins which is another column in the Druthers newspaper if you haven't gathered as much this is all you know what they consider alternative news it's not really alternative like I said it's it's one of the only sources of some factual information so, take it for what you will. I don't like putting labels on it, but yeah, there's another column in here called Freedom Wins, and there used to be another one. I don't know if they're still doing it, because I haven't seen it for a few months now, which was the uh, Good News Tidbits. So maybe they're, you know, alternating between Good News Tidbits and Freedom Wins. I don't know. Anyway, we're going to do the November edition, even though it's technically December the 6th today. I'm behind on my druthers let's reads so we're gonna do November I was actually reading the paper today and that's what got me realizing like holy crap the time is going by fast I just received the December issue over there which is number 37 and I realized holy crap I still got to do let's read druthers issue number 36 just not enough time in the day right everybody's kind of feeling it which I don't want to get off on another philosophical tangent here, but almost leads me to believe there's something there if everybody's feeling that way. Anyway, so we'll make the most with our time, and I'll catch up. That's the nice thing about doing this series is I can actually catch up. Oh, and I said I would show the comic, so there's a look at the uh, satirical comic, which is usually the Ben Garrison or the like, and this one is indeed Ben Garrison. No. Absolute. Sorry, I can hardly read it. Absolute free speech. Free speech, not free reach. Lawful but not awful. Lawful but awful. Bad cop, zap, good cop. What's he saying? Musk has blocked you. And that is James Woods. I don't know what's going on. I don't really, other than Druthers, honestly, I don't really pay attention to, to much of any news. I, I just don't have time to waste on those sort of things. Like, I'm either working, spending time with the family, doing something on, on the property here, or, you know, some type of project, or researching stuff. That's all I do. That's all I do. I don't have time to just sit there and be bombarded with doom and gloom from, you know, CBC News. No thank you. So yeah, let's get to it. Absurdity Observer. Some of the most absurd things that have happened in recent weeks. 
Pfizer admits the public received a different vaccine formulation than the one that they tested. New information has emerged that the COVID vaccine Pfizer distributed was not produced using the same process as the vaccine that was tested prior to gaining approval for distribution. Pretty shady there. This clinical trial, bait and switch, Pfizer claims was necessary since the process they used during the trials could not be used on a mass scale in a cost-effective way. Unlike their original clinical batches, process, the mass scaled process leaves behind plasmid DNA remnants in the vaccine which has been linked to side effects. And that's actually the whole front cover is about that, this story here which I read and it goes into detail that it wasn't just, you know, a couple of vials that were tainted with DNA, it was like a significant amount which even at small doses they're known to be you know, toxic and cause cancer and all kinds of stuff, but they were in like 70 times the amount that that was expected and it wasn't just a fail, it was like a huge fail, it was an epic fail. So check that out. And Druthers, by the way, is free. I forgot to mention that at the beginning. Druthers, if you're not familiar, this publication is free. Uh, you just have to pay for the shipping. You can have it sent to your whole neighborhood if you want, it's pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, that one's not shocking, but at the same time, nice to see the evidence coming to the surface, right? Uh, next one, environmentalists are now advocating that we chop down trees to save the planet. That makes sense, right? We already supposedly have a problem with that. Let's chop down more trees. Uh, forget planting trees to suck up the carbon in the air. The Bill Gates-funded tech company Kodama Systems is planning on chopping down and burying trees that are at risk of burning or decaying to reduce the chances of trees naturally dying and spewing their stored carbon back into the air. That's one of those perfect example of someone who has no idea what they're doing, first of all, and just a solution that just doesn't make any sense to the problem. It makes plenty of sense if you have, you know, various agenda that you know, you somehow benefit from chopping down these trees or whatever, you know, then it makes sense. But otherwise, not so much. The World Economic Forum wants white people kicked to the back of hospital wait lists. The World Economic Forum has created an equity health initiative. I love how all these people, like everybody and their grandma now is using the word equity and they have no idea what it means. You know, they either think it has something to do with their mortgage and how much of their house that they own, or they think it, it means uh, equality, and it means neither of those things. So it's kind of funny. Uh, which is actually part of the Global Health Equity Network. I wonder if that network knows anything about equity. Uh, that prioritizes and deprioritizes uh, patients on the basis of their ethnicity. The initiative has already been rolled out in New Zealand, where it is pushing Maori patients up wait lists to fight inequality. See, then they and then they use equality, inequality, so they're interchangeably using those two words, and they're not the same. That's the kind of ignorance that I want to point to. And this, I don't know if they researched it to that degree when they were putting together the the Druthers you know, article or whatever, but these are things that need to be considered. Word, I say this all the time, but it's true, words matter. So that's, yeah, that's a little scary, being that I fall in that category, I guess, technically, by the color of my skin. You see, this, this is another thing that we're, I'm, not, I'm gonna try not to go on a rant here, but it's another thing I cannot believe in this day and age, again, that we're struggling with this kind of thing, this this, this skin color, right, getting hung up on, on that, that, superficial a level of ridiculousness like just childish not even kids don't even see it kids don't even see color so it's not even childish it's like i don't know anyway the cia paid off analysts in order to bury their findings that covid19 was most likely leaked from a lab in wuhan china new whistleblower testimony to u.s congress alleges 
So many of those things in that sentence alone didn't add up for me. Uh, according to the whistleblower in the CIA COVID discovery team, which consisted of seven experienced officers with significant scientific expertise, six of the seven believed that the intelligence and science were sufficient to say that COVID-19 may have originated in a lab. The seventh, who happened to be the senior officer and who did not agree that, with the team, uh, orchestrated for team members to be given a significant monetary incentive to change their position. Not too, not too hard to figure out what's going on there. Uh, Preprint study titled, Unnaturalness in the Evolution Process of SARS-CoV-2 Variants and the Possibility of Deliberate Natural Selection at Sushi at, and Takayuki finds evidence of deliberate and systematic creation of circulating COVID variant Omicron. The scientists noted that perfect re reversions of mutations like this on such a scale, in addition to the lack of synonymous non-functional mutations, is completely implausible by any natural process. The top virologists who authored the paper noted that academic journal they sub the academic journal they submitted to is refusing to publish their article, not because they have a problem with the study's data or science, but because the article contains potential inflammatory language. <laughs> okay, and we're going to see a lot more of that. Get ready for it. Eight-year-old Israeli poster child for COVID vaccines dies of sudden cardiac arrest. Israel, sometimes referred to as the world's largest Pfizer case study due to its significant purchase and brutal mandate of exclusively Pfizer vaccines, has previous, that's crazy how a vaccine company could buy out a whole country like that, had previously featured Yonatan Moshe Ehrlichman in a government-sponsored commercial promoting COVID-19 vaccine. The young boy's tragic death mirrors the story of Santino Godoy Blanco, the Argentine vaccine poster boy who died last year at age four from pneumonia. And then I saw somewhere, maybe it was in here, I'm not sure, but they were talking about some type of weird uh, mutation of pneumonia, like a pneumonia flu, uh, COVID type thing and that was the big the new big scare so we'll see but I thought pneumonia could or, or is uh, bacteria based so I don't know how that works maybe there's yeah there's probably such thing as a viral pneumonia as well I don't know you can't pay too much attention to this stuff because a lot of them just come and go a lot of them you don't ever hear about it again. And, you know, the ones that become a problem, I mean, it it makes its way through the population. What what other way is there? What other option do we really have? Do we do we really think that oh from now on our sci our supposed science, which is the scientism of it all, is saying we've got it covered. Don't worry, whatever it is that nature throws at us, we've got it covered. You know? And that's that's naive. That's a very naive point of view to think you can one up Mother Nature and somehow rule it and conquer it. Like no, that 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 leads down a very very slippery slope. It doesn't end well. Nature will always win every time. While simultaneously lacking support and not offering affordable rehab centers to those with addictions. Canada's Medically Assisted Dying Program, or MAID, announced it will expand to include those solely, solely drug or alcohol addictions this spring. Those with solely drug and alcohol addictions. So they're basically saying they will help people with mental, not just mental diseases, but people with addictions also, and or people with addictions. They will, they will also help them to kill themselves. <laughs> I'm not even going to comment on that one. Uh, study titled BNT162B2, 
COVID-19 vaccination in children alters cytokine responses to heterologous pathogens and toll-like receptor agonists. No way at all. Revealed that Pfizer's mRNA COVID-19 vaccine is detrimental to children's immune response to other viral infections. To other viral infections. The study found that the shots decreased interleukin-6 in particular, an essential player in fighting viral infections. This study supports the finding of a similar previous study and also real word I guess that meant real world findings of increased viral infection rates that the World Health Organization and the CDC have reported on. Damn man, that's a it's a scary world now. Like it's it's really gotten to the point where your odds of living out that idyllic, you know, 80 plus year lifespan is just it's dwindling. It's going down the shitter every year. Speaking of the CDC, the CDC just publicly admitted that the COVID vaccine was not life-saving and harmful for children. It's got two, two bad things going against it there. In their recent ACIP report on CDC.gov, they claimed per million doses in 12 to 17 year olds over six months, zero to one deaths have been prevented. What? Per million doses in 12 to 17 year olds over six months. What? Zero to one deaths have been prevented. Okay. Even worse, that same report noted that every million doses resulted in 100,000 to 200,000 severe side effects. See the breakdown by reporter Alex Berenson. That's crazy. If that's true, I'd have to look at the report to know for sure, obviously, but that's crazy. It's if the, the, the benefit, you know, I knew that the benefit would be very low, but I didn't know, I didn't think it would be that low. That's crazy. See, again, how many people were saying the adverse reactions are so much more of a concern and when it first started happening all throughout you're in the middle of it at the end you know so few people so few of their the experts uh the real experts their peers were li were listening they weren't listening they just didn't want to have anything of it because they just had their agenda in their mind their their view of reality and that was it so so single lane just one direction as a part of the same government legislation that is preventing druthers.net from being shared on sites such as facebook the canadian government is expanding the online streaming act to require all major streaming platforms to register with the canadian radio television and telecommunications commission or crtc this will likely include platforms like YouTube, Netflix, TikTok, Spotify, Rumble, and Rumble, too. As the CRTC announced, the act included includes a proposed rule that would force content to be available in English, French, and Indigenous languages, and aims to make content more inclusive of persons with disabilities ethno-cultural groups, racial communities, and 2SLGBTQI plus communities. There's so much packed into that one. Holy crap. Like, it's like there's, there's multiple different things going on there. Multiple different discussions and battles and they're all lumped up together. Like, what really does this commission have to do with ethno-cultural groups, racial racialized communities. They're to they're to do with telecommunications. It's the Canadian Radio, Television, and Telecommunications Commission (CRTC). So why are they getting involved in 2S LGBTQI plus communities? What's going on there? And why? 
why is this act only applicable to the the major stream like there's so much going on here I didn't realize that Druthers is getting blocked on uh, Facebook but that doesn't surprise me at all they hate Druthers they don't like anyone that you know tries to push the truth on people a new Penn State study titled Life Course Patterns of Prescription Drug Use in the United States revealed that people born in the U.S. today will spend over half their lives taking prescription drugs. The findings of the study aligned with what a 2022 U.S. Congressional Budget Office report noted that nationwide spending on prescription drugs increased from the equivalent of $30 billion in 1980 in U.S. dollars to $335 billion in 200, or 2018, accounting for inflation, real per capita spending on prescription drugs increased more than sevenfold from $140 in 2018 U.S. dollars to $1,073 USD. It's crazy. That we're not going to be able to, to live. That, that, that's the idea, right? It's... People won't be able to afford to live that conventional lifestyle, the one that we've gotten accustomed to and became our cushy, padded room, you know. Eventually, even that will be taken away. It's like, it's like you have a, a rat in a cage and you make the cage very, very comfortable, very similar to what it might have in a natural habitat. Then slowly you just remove a rock here, chunk of dirt here, vegetation here, and just keep systematically removing things one at a time until this space becomes completely artificial. The process was so long and gradual that the rat didn't have time to really process what was going on. The changes were so subtle and happened over such a long period of time that the rat doesn't really pay attention to the fact that Oh, shit, I'm completely surrounded in plastic now, or, you know, a very small space compared to this large burrow that I used to find myself in. Now I'm all of a sudden in some PVC pipe in some scientist's lab, you know, my whole life is dedicated to this, um, this, this researcher's area of study. It's like I've... I've involuntarily sacrificed my life for this giant experiment and there's a lot there there's a lot there in, in what I just said there's a lot of uh, a lot of different ways we could go with that but it speaks to some of the same truths as we're uncovering here in a lot of these bullet points but got two more to go so let's finish it off here strong a shocking new report by Canadian Institute for Health Information reveals that at least 602 transgender minors have had breasts surgically removed in Canada since 2018 as part of so-called gender-affirming care. Some children were as young as 14 years old. The actual number of minors who have undergone life-changing gender-affirming surgeries is likely larger as private clinics that cater to transgender clients were not included in the study. Hmm, that says it all right there. And then, last but not least, while Girl Guides in Canada is actively encouraging their members to attend Pride Parades on their blog, the Santa Claus Parade is off limits. Cut off. The organization announced that the Santa Claus Parade and other Christmas-related activities are off limits to its members because the organization does not allow religion and is trying to be more inclusive. How can you be more inclusive than denying people's religions, right? Earlier this, le this year, the Girl, Girl Guides of Canada also rebranded the name of their brownies group to Embers to be more inclusive. So how, what? how does bra going from brownies, which is a mythological creature, to Embers, which means nothing, it's a chunk of a fire, a fiery, uh, coal like what what is what does that have anything to do with brownies and being that being offensive? I don't understand the world anymore Anyway
anyway, sorry, I'll finish the bullet here. Earlier this year, GGC also rebranded the name of their brownies group to Embers to be more inclusive. Despite their focus on inclusivity, GGC previously banned unvaccinated leaders. They're hypocritical, like everybody else under the sun. And then there's an oops correction. So I probably covered this in one of the previous um, Let's Reads. So I might as well read the update as well. So oops, correction and update last month. So for the October issue, which was number 35. So this applies to issue number 35. Last month, we incorrectly reported that schools across Canada were banning all school books printed before 2008 due older due to this is missing a to older books not being inclusive enough. In fact, it's Ontario's second largest district school board, Peel, that took this approach. Okay, so it was just one school board. After backlash from the advocacy group, so maybe it was just like a test test group. After backlash from the advocacy, advocacy group, liber, libraries, not landfills, the board appeared to backpedal, saying that books that are accurate, relevant to the student population, inclusive, not harmful, and support the current curriculum can stay. Okay, so very broad brushstroke category is acceptable you know, according to their standards and we won't burn your books as long as it's covered with this brush stroke I see but anyway that clarifies it and see they're not afraid to admit where they they got something wrong when they just correct it on the next issue that happens all the time that's part of learning that's part of just gathering you know proper you know information so, According to some type of method, method or standard or something. Anyway, that's it. That is Absurdity Observer for November, issue number thirty-six. Hope you enjoyed it. And then next time we're gonna do. I don't think it's good news tidbits. Like I said, I haven't seen that one in a while. But join me next time when we're gonna do the Freedom Wins. Pretty sure this one had it. Freedom Wins. It wins. There we go. It's a very small category compared to the some of the, the doom and gloom that goes on out there. But it's not all doom and gloom. It's all it's also positive stories. It's also signs of change. It's also hope. It's also, you know, some motivation and inspiration. So you gotta read it. You gotta read it. You gotta take the good with the bad. You gotta take it all. There's no choice. No point doing anything else because you can be real. So Anyway, thanks for watching. Like I said, join me again next time. We're going to do the Freedom Wins. And that will uplift us, and make us feel grand, and then we'll be pumped to go about our day and make a difference in this world. So thank you very much for watching. Support the channel if you like it. And of course, support Druthers if you like the publication. Most important thing. Spread the word. Spread the good word. Truth, love, and freedom. Be well. Take care. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Well, 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 well of a good time, Waylon Smithers, Waylon, 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 Waylon. So, what's in the news? What's in the news, you ask? Druthers. Truth, love, and freedom, Druthers, is in the news. That made no sense. It doesn't matter, because this is just the testing of sound.